Hello. Hi, folks. Hey, how are you? <laughs> good, good. How are you, Matt? Hi, Daniel. Good morning. Uh, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Lots to do this year. <laughs> so welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, best wishes. Hi, Nick. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Matt. Hi. Hi, Henrik. I hope everyone had a good uh, holiday. I kind of hard unplugged. I didn't expect to, but I kind of went PC off for a good solid almost a week through Christmas. Good for you. <laughs> a family time. Yep. Avalita, are you going to sort of MC things today? Uh, sorry, I'm on mute. Yes, I can. I'm happy to. Um, again, I had one topic that I wanted to just add to our agenda. And uh, again, folks, feel free to. Um, actually, Matt has already added that, <laughs> so that's cool. And uh, feel free to add yourselves to the to the attendees list for this New Year's meeting, and then we can get started. Should we wait for another minute or so to, in order to get started, or we should just? I think few folks are still off for um... uh, the TOC meeting was canceled. That was going to be just before yes. this. Yes, yes. Not a lot of people are off, so this might be a really quick, short meeting, and we can return time, uh, or we yeah, can talk. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, Again, um, so I, what, what I wanted to do first is, uh, again, you know, uh, kind of give a quick update on what's happening on the Open Telemetry project. Uh, as you, many of you already know, it's a very large project and, you know, there's a lot of different components that are in development or moving towards stability. Um, and one of the, uh, you know, goals the project has had um, is to actually uh, take each data signal for telemetry uh, traces first, then uh, metrics, and then logs, uh, and and uh, you know stabilize the um, collection uh, process implementation through the collector as well as the eleven language SDKs, um, as well as build out auto instrumentation for each language to make it easier for. Um, you know, any users to be able to take and use the collection agents or the SDKs and uh, be able to auto instrument uh, their configurations and, and set up to easily be able to collect right from a diversity of sources. Now, um, obviously, you know, let me dive a little bit into traces. First, traces has stabilized last year in September. So the functionality, you know, supporting the open telemetry protocol, which is again, interoperable with the standard protocols in tracing, open tracing and specifically and others um, has been built out and that's fully usable in production. So tracing, you know, was actually the first uh, given its maturity from even the predecessor projects that intersected into open telemetry. The next part is uh, metrics, which is where the bulk of the work for the uh, last few months has been ongoing. And um, the way that open telemetry, you know, has kind of targeted um, an iterative process for achieving stability has been that the collector, you know, with the collector agent being stable uh, for metrics, specifically OTLP and the full open metrics, Prometheus interoperability are the two guarantees that the project provides um, for all metrics data. And then the second part being the SDKs, the libraries, at least three of the major libraries offering stability for end-to-end -end collection uh, processing and exporting, right? So um, that's that's kind of the core metric stability guarantees that the project is aiming to complete and deliver by the first quarter um, 
hopefully by end of January, there's a big milestone for Java to be available as stable. The data model and the protocol is already stable. Uh, and then the collector also at the same time with OTLP being stable first, with Prometheus interoperability being completed and completely compliant, um, as well as you know, all those results for regular compliance tests uh, being, being published and passing. Um, and then going into you know, providing metrics, end-to-end uh, -end pipelines, uh, data pipelines for uh, the other SDKs. Right, so it's kind of been an iterative approach. And again, uh, JavaScript, as well as Go, as well as um, uh, Python and .NET are you know, close follow-ups from Java, right? So again, those are the first five SDKs and then the others will follow like C++ or Rust and, and um, other implementations. So that's where we stand with metrics and you know, through the most of Q1, the objective is to you know stabilize the major SDKs as well as in you know, the collector and Java landing in first gen end of gen. Um, that said, then we move on to logs, which is actually a very important uh, you know audience and constituency in in the open telemetry project. And uh, one of the areas that we have been actually working towards is making sure that the logs data model is first of all, uh, interoperable with major, you know, common formats, as well as the um, formats for, you know, which are defined in the data model being fully supported uh, on the project. And to that end, again, we've been working closely uh, as an industry group, um, you know, to um, also identify common schemas such as the elastic schema to uh, make sure that that, uh, you know, schema is fully interoperable and fully compatible with um, the uh, logging implementations and the data protocol. So that's, that's an area that is underway right now. It's just, you know, in its uh, uh, alpha stage, if you will, right now, but it, there's a lot of exciting work that's coming up um, in the next few months where uh, an initial implementation of logging will be available, um, you know, through through the end of Q1, uh, going into Q2, and then also uh, thereafter, uh, you know, picking up the more complex use cases of logging and being able to support that with, you know, sophisticated formats such as uh, elastic format, right? So uh, again, that's where we are right now. And then of course, picking up implementation and core languages first, and then uh, going after the rest of the SDKs. So there's a lot of, lot of work happening, you know, in terms of uh, just building out the uh, functionality for the, each of the data signals to be fully, fully supported. Um, alongside that, there are some fundamental areas that are also being worked on. Uh, one is, you know, expanding the types of metrics that are being used and collected. Uh, EBPF included, and uh, there is a component which uh, you know was donated as a receiver in the uh, in the open telemetry collector from Splunk, uh, which is Flowmill, and that has been you know primarily uh, served as the basis for um, integration and support of EBPF uh, data for collection, uh, and then that will be used as a basis for expanding upon you know, support for more types of metrics, right? In, in the BPF world. The other part that is super interesting is, um, you know, again, taking database metrics and other, da other data uh, types with SQL commentator, which was donated as a component from Google uh, and taking that as a baseline to be integrated also into the uh, collector agent which is going to be then, you know, a serve as an, also another um, smart component in, in, in the uh, uh, pipeline for, you know, processing different uh, metrics from databases and other types of um, related, you know, trace uh, correlation and other stuff that can be done. Um, so related to that, uh, we are also then looking at uh, building out more, um, 
processing, uh, you know, processor based analysis um, in the collector, as well as um, other areas such as sampling for tracing, uh, you know, some more sophisticated sampling, also correlation across the different data signals, right? So that is, that is some of the discussion and, and some design work that's ongoing on the project. And if you're interested in, you know, leading or, or, or participating in any of these discussions, you know, please ping me happy to connect you with the, you know, uh, maintainers and the contributors there. Um, the uh, and and last but not least, there's a an, an fair bit of work happening in the instrumentation area where we do have uh, instrument an instrumentation SIG. They wear you know different um, large customers, end users, um, different um, vendors who are you know working towards and bringing their expertise towards defining semantic conventions as well as then. Um, building out uh, instrumentation conventions and, and then building, you know, the functionality out or participating. And, and that's an area where, you know, we're, there's a fair bit of work also happening where we're adding tests, we're adding, you know, what, what instrumentation conventions are um, for different types of data uh, and, and, you know, building that out. So um, again, you know, that's kind of the summary at a very high level of, of all the different moving parts of, uh, you know, what's ongoing on the project today, but, but uh, it is, it has been a very open project and, you know, different uh, teams who have been interested or different engineers who have been interested in leaving, leading a specific effort have just uh, come and participate, have participated. Um, we had a tremendous, you know, amount of interoperable operability work that happened last year and we will you know continue that this year uh, with the open metrics and the Prometheus communities and of course also work very closely with the Kubernetes project um, and other related projects such as you know um, Cube Prometheus and other um, you know projects which are supporting Helm charts for deployments and other integrations uh, to, to continue to build build that the functionality out. Um, and that's all I had. Uh, any questions? This correlation of signals uh, topic, where is this currently being discussed in which uh, SIG? Um, Daniel, this is uh, in the um, sampling SIG. There is some amount of discussion that is ongoing. That's at uh, 8 a.m. I think on Thursdays, uh, the SIG is held. Um, and uh, there's also some discussion in the metrics um, SIG at the moment. And I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, that will actually continue on in the log SIG also. Yeah, definitely interesting topic. Yeah, I mean, that's something which is, you know, very useful to end users. And I think that that's uh, something that easily can be done um, at, at the processor level, you know, to a larger extent, uh, pre-processing some of the data or aggregating some of the data, which can then be uh, sent, you know, downstream on the pipeline. Mm, makes sense. Um, um, I've been testing the uh, the um, open telemetry collector uh, operator uh, recently, mm -hmm. which is, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm, it simplifies so much the <laughs> the work. So it's the, I was so so, uh, so excited when I saw it. And I also um, utilizing the uh, Fluent Bit operator that has been released uh, maybe one two months ago, or I don't remember when exactly. And I was when you were referring to the logs, I was wondering if there is any conjunctions or anything that could be um, um, mutualized between what Fluent Bit operator is doing and what's the uh, uh, open uh, co uh, telemetry collector will probably do soon on logs uh, so maybe there will be a simplified lot of things uh, yeah i mean i think that's a very good call out hendrik because uh, definitely you know uh, the objective is to be able to provide that ease of use through the um, operators and the helm chart uh, and the operator specifically um, we did um, uh, so there's there's some interesting you know again discussions ongoing. I think the, that we have just not reached that point in the project itself where you know we have 
really good integration in the operator as well as Helm charts available for you know pulling in Fluent Bit data or supporting that uh, full integration for Fluent Bit through the collector or through you know other uh, uh, through the collector specifically. Um, that said, there are uh, Helm charts that we have built downstream on, uh, I mean, as AWS, uh, we have a distribution downstream where we have built Helm charts to make available um, uh, both fluent bit logs, you know, base logs, as well as uh, metrics, for example, which we will actually um, add, uh, contribute back to the project, right? So, I mean, our objective has been, even if it is built anywhere on a different project, if we can integrate it into, or make it available through documentation, even on open telemetry, it's ease of use to users, right? So uh, definitely that's something, again, if you have, you know, please file an issue, you know, ask for it, tag me, happy sure. to I mean i'd love to see that integration actually coming into place sure and, and also i think uh, there is a lot of uh, uh by just playing around with the operator and looking at what the bit operator is, or is able to do mm -hmm. with new crds um i was thinking that maybe instead of having this uh, uh, crd open telemetry collector that where you have the entire pipeline described there um being able to split uh crates Open telemetry receivers, uh, open yeah. telemetry. Uh, so, did uh, separate objects. So, then mm -hmm. the pipeline, you can easily update it. So, it makes life easier for projects at the end of the day instead of having one big object where you have everything yes. all the pipeline there. I think that. Yeah. And, and to that, Henrik, you know, one of the areas that we've been working towards is there is a uh, Go based builder tool that we have built, you know, on the project. Uh, which is which you know we are continuing to refine and add and enhance where you can actually build more streamlined uh, pipelines, right? That is collectors with specific receiver with a specific you know uh, processor and a specific exporter, where it's it's completely streamlined only with those components, right? And not everything in it, right? So you can pick and choose, and this builder over time will enable you to configure your own uh, you know, set of components that you can then just build and use as a snapshot, right, as an image. So uh, that's something, again, you know, which is quite popular even in the Go um, you know, packaging space. That's a model that we have been actually using and building out gradually. I can I can ping you the link uh, if you you know ping me to, on I'll Slack see. because that's something that we'd love to get more. Um, I mean, think of it as a package manager, right? Whereas in in previous times uh, on on other large projects such as you know when RPM came about or um, you know some of the other Linux uh, package managers which have developed over time, it's very similar in concept, but really being able to build your own distribution is ideal because you can, you know, as a user, kind of just pick what you need and just build that out, right? And you don't have to pick everything um, which is coming pre-bundled in say a release as such. Okay, cool, thanks. So that, that optimizes, you know, what the operator then, you know, can actually just define a simple CRD for and be able to um, use. Right, as is part of the collector. Okay. Any other questions? Again, you know, please feel free to ping me on Slack. I'm happy to connect you if you're not already involved in the project. It's a large project, so sometimes it's difficult to navigate. So I'm really interesting on the on the operator. I think it's. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, awesome, we'll awesome. Reach out yeah. to you uh, on this one. Please do, please do. I mean, we are, we are also working very actively. Our, our team is also working very actively on the operator. So um, again, you know, would have, would, uh, we've built out some of the Fluent Fit integration downstream already. So again, would be very happy to, um, you know, add that in into the, uh, help add that in into the operator on the project. Again, our, our baseline has been that, you know, everything that we build, there are 
or see use cases for we're adding back to the project itself. I have a question for you, all of you though. Do you see any other integrations? Uh, Fluent Bit is a very important one. And of course, logging, you know, as logging becomes a major use case for the, for the components on Hotel, uh, are there other uh, sources that, or, or formats that you see that are supported? I mean, Elastic goes without saying. Um, any other, you know, in, um, integrations that you see would be useful? I mean, it's just a question again, you know, I don't have to respond to it now, but it's just that more it's, it's, you know, the project is constantly looking at, okay, what, what is most useful to end users and, um, you know, making sure that at least the basic pipelines guarantee support for that. I mean, so from my past, it was fluent D, fluent bit. Logs. Yes. Yes. The, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I'm going to say. It's there's still a, a large portion of the community utilizing FluentD, mm -hmm. even if FluentBit covers most of the features that FluentD uh, provides. But the fact that FluentD has so many plugins as uh, to, compared to FluentBit, um, there are still some to, not a, a large number of users still using FluentD. Yes, for sure, for sure. And I mean, that's something that again, should be absolutely fully supported. I mean, there's no reason technically not to do that. And uh, that's definitely an objective, you know, of the project to, to be fully interoperable with yeah. that support. For me also here, uh, I was most also, especially when we, when we were start doing a lot of log stream pipelines, mm -hmm. um, there is a clearly a need to also, uh, I get observability on, on what's going on in your pipeline. So how many, how many streams coming in in the pipeline, how many have been ingested? I mean, any type of operation that could happen and then goes out. And I think um, uh, there is few solutions that provide like a visualizations of what happened happen on, on the pipeline. But I think that should be, a, if we have something that uh, process logs or do transform logs or whatever it is, or sim similar to the metrics, having also like a, um, a significant uh, level of details what's going on in the pipeline because when you design those pipelines usually uh, at the beginning you yeah you use this to the out and then you cross the fingers to see it, it's, it's going to work and <laughs> but you don't have much visibility on what's going on except yeah uh, yeah just doing a very good out. point and i think that henrik you know one thing that um i think uh, um it definitely, you know, it has been discussed, but actually has not had enough uh, engineering work done on yet um, is um, uh, health me metrics for, you know, and health uh, pro logs, if you will, for the entire pipeline, right? And, and being able to make those, uh, that data available easily uh, for anyone. There is, there are, you know, there is some, um, initial, you know, components, initial implementation of components, as you know, on the collector itself to watch and observe the collector and, you know, emit uh, some of the um, health stats for the each of the components within the collector. But uh, again, that's something that um, is, you know, once we have uh, the pipeline, the processing pipeline stability uh, done, then we will actually start working and targeting that, um, you know, those health metrics. It's a request from uh, all, you know, users, actually, every, every end user who's participating in the project actively or, you know, other customers who have been providing feedback. So definitely agree with you there. I mean, maybe I can reach out to you offline and we can file an issue to you know, make sure that those uh, use cases are actually captured, uh, where we can actually make sure that the uh, you know work that's uh, development work supports that. Like, what kind of metrics would you like to see, right? What kind of process logs would you like to see? What kind of you know information in the logs would you like to see for 
for mm -hmm. the uh, different components. I think you, you should have the the, flex, the flexibility to sort of turn on debug or normal mode, whatever it is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and get some sort of traces out. So when yes. you're stuck in your pipeline, so then you, you can understand what happens on, on the log transformations. So that could be also very helpful because usually when you manipulate logs, it's you, you're working in the dark a lot. Um, and then you, it's very time consuming to, to create a, an efficient uh, log pipeline. And I think, yeah, for the metrics, I think uh, uh, the health, how is the health of the, the pipeline, uh, number of streams coming in, coming out, yeah. uh, anything that, that could send a signal to, uh, let's say the, the team that, that should manage all those pipelines, that there is one component that is almost dying or, or is not doing, or is not ingesting as many as log, as, as many logs, as uh, the, the number of logs that we are supposed to ingest. So I think mm -hmm. anything that, that gives uh, extra visibility and help to detect and proactively detect problems, I think that will be very helpful for everyone. Definitely, I agree totally. I mean, again, each of the uh, data streams has their own complexity, right? So again, I think that having a standard set of uh, metrics and logs that are, you know, useful and and um, don't, uh, you know, affect performance uh, when turned on. Like, you know, if you turn on debug mode, uh, what does the, the thing should not slow down significantly, you know, in terms of emitting more data, uh, but really being able to have that and then a standardized visualization that is available for a dashboard that's available for you know being able to visualize uh, that data is super useful so i mean i'll, I'll create an issue and and then uh, maybe we can work together on sure. adding awesome. some more detail sure. there you know again even the cases that you called out were pretty good matt sorry uh, you were your hand was up um yeah, no, it, it's okay. I had, a, I had a couple of questions from the past, you know, you know 10 minutes or so of discussion um, or, or, or bits of feedback. One, uh, and, I, and some of these are questions because I'm not super deep into open telemetry. And I know that it's, there's quite a few sure. uh, groups and SIGs and, and there's so many work streams. Uh, so apologies if some of these are already in existence, but if not, I think it might make sense to at least propose that we do stuff like this. Uh, on, on the Fluent Deep part, uh, you know, as stated, there's a huge ecosystem of, mm -hmm. of vendors and other projects that all leverage Fluent Deep. So is there today in the OTEL, you know, logs bits, um, uh, CI and CD to kind of confirm that, you know, there aren't breaking changes that might, while well, still, that, that might impact Fluent Deep or some of those scenarios? Um, I think, um, or is that not the current process and it's really the other way around, you know, in terms of interoperability and compatibility? Um, I think, I think, uh, Matt, you bring up a very good point. I mean, this is something that we, you know, addressed uh, given we were, you know, have been kind of heads down focused on metrics right now. We did the same thing with open metrics and, and Prometheus, you know, uh, interoperability where, uh, you know, not only have we made sure that uh, feature-wise, um, you know, there is full compatibility, but also from a data signal, a data type, uh, you know, um, at, at the data protocol and end-to-end, -end, right? What's being emitted and, and is it valid coming out of each yeah. part of the collector, right? So the same thing actually doesn't exist for Fluent Bit yet, Fluent D yet, but um, should, I mean, as we pick up, uh, uh, you know, uh, that compliance area, interoperability area, it's the same thing even with uh, elastic, uh, you know, common schema formats, right? That we should be able to actually completely interoperate or uh, completely able to support that. Sure, um, yeah, and, and so we had also, we had reached out to Ed, Eduardo uh, De Silva, um, yeah last year uh, actually uh, about potentially being a TL uh, tech lead. Uh, so, you know, obviously I think we, we could reach out there and, and develop those yeah, ideas yeah. a little further. On the log side, I'll be, I'll be kind of, I'll try to be brief. Uh, I've got like two or three things here. Uh, one, um, in terms of scenarios around logs, two that come to mind uh, directly, or three actually that come to mind from, from at least how I've 
used some of this stuff and we've used Fluent and Fluent Bit uh, as well as Prompt Help pretty extensively in various places. Um, one is the uh, log derived metrics. Is there, you know, is there a standard or a, a, a good practices, <laughs> um, either document or, or opinion on the OTEL side about how to do this? Or is that viewed as something downstream? Because it seems like in the collector, you know, <laughs> it's a natural place to potentially have log derived metrics happen, like, you know, from things happening in logs. But perhaps more importantly is events from logs. You know, there's a lot of legacy mm -hmm. systems that output events, mm -hmm. either JSON or, or other formats. Um, and having a well-formed way to turn, you know, things that are embedded in logs into events, if, if that, you know, becomes part of that ecosystem is another scenario. And then third, uh, is there sort of a, an, an OTEL collector transformation or other well best practices around redaction uh, for compliance, right? So many logs sometimes for better or worse can surface things like customer data or sensitive information or credentials, even though they shouldn't, <laughs> you know, uh, this is life. So, so you know, it, or is that just considered like that would be a transformation step and it's an open ecosystem and, and that's no, I, I think I think these are all uh, very good use cases went uh, what I can say is that um, for event, for your first use case where there are log uh, log derived metrics um, so there has been error kind of thing right? right right there there has definitely been discussion around that I know and the data model you know the, and that exists today has tried to address it in a very you know nascent way um I think uh, IoT is, is yes, the, the exactly that that's where the demand might be right like yeah and and I think that also you know leads into your second uh use case of events from logs which is where you know the IOT real user monitoring uh use cases you know kind of kick in and uh real user monitoring definitely is being addressed uh, there is a sig um you know discussion around uh, how to process eBPF uh, data, which is similar to, you know, the uh, uh, events driven, uh, events data coming in from logs. Uh, but real user monitoring and IoT use cases also have other, uh, you know, specific types of events which are not necessarily de derivable from logs, right? So that's sure, a gray course. area. Yeah. And just thinking like, you know, there could be Arduinos or, or other pies, yeah. you know, very, very kind of like consumer grade uh, or very lightweight, thin, you know, IoT devices that, you know, just spit stuff out from logs and don't run a full, you know, Prometheus client and don't do their own. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and that's, you know, inevitably, you know, in hybrid environments where somebody is running a huge, uh, you know, network of uh, such devices, that information, you know, will also be collected and collated uh, back into the, you know, a, a monitoring, you know, service or a, or, or a visualization, you know, where you want to see uh, the health or status of different, you know, work streams of data coming in, right? So that's inevitable as a use case. And it's something that's being looked at. I think that uh, just to be very clear that uh, use case is known to us in hotel but is not being worked on actively yet because of the immaturity of logs uh, as an implementation so the first objective you know as we look at logs is to actually make sure that the uh, server based the uh, na you know cloud native use cases are first um, well, obviously addressed but then uh, it's definitely on our radar to support log derived metrics first uh, and real user uh, monitoring slash events from logs also. So those are definitely two areas that are actively being worked on, but they're still, you know, in development. Yeah. On the events side, it might make sense to collaborate with the cloud events, uh, CNCF sure. project, you know, big, their whole payload, you know, kind of, which is, I, I won't, it's an it's a nice interesting architecture that could mate quite well right and and and, and I'll, I'll avoid a lot of duplication the third kind of thing i was i was kind of curious about around scenarios are uh you know both encryption and compression uh in yeah. terms of transformations um 
and, and you know, best practice around that again, like anyone can kind of hack in yeah. to, the, to the collector and add transformations, but like, you know, if, if there's something tested and certified to be secure, right, on the encryption side and, and on the, on the, on the, uh, on the compression side, you know, um, you know, those are things that can obviously be accelerated in hardware, uh, in various appliances as, or other, you know, hyper-converged infrastructure vendors, you know, do, do, do have plugins like that. So, you know, you know, so similarly to how Kubernetes workloads can, you know, start to leverage things like GPUs based on various frameworks, you know, from VMware and, and everybody else, you know, the same might be the case for log processing at scale, right? It's a natural place to put, you know, hardware acceleration. Yeah, and, and that's where right. I think, yeah. you know, some of the work, Matt, uh, it's not actively being done on the project today, but Elastic, you know, obviously it has a lot of experience of in yeah, some sure. of these specific, you know, complex use cases. So does Logs and other, you know, contributors. Yeah, Daniel's project. smiling Riley to himself. And I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to, you know, actually, uh, uh, I'm hoping that, um, you know, again, the teams that have this expertise will actually work on the project together. Uh, and, and Daniel here, perhaps, you know, you can uh, shed some more, you know, light on some of the work that has already been done on the Elastic Search uh, side, which actually plays to the more co complex, you know, use cases of security or, um uh, redaction of security you know uh, uh credentials etc for and how that is handled you know as a as a practice or implementation on on uh, elastic search right because that's that's again something that will influence what is being built or supported on hotel but the hotel definitely doesn't have that support today Right, but I mean, the, 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 the use brief, I'll just, the last thing I'll say, then I'll go back to me for a little bit. Uh, the last thing I'll say is this is coming from the perspective of like, so you're new to the CNCF, you know, okay. so you have, you know, you've been using your own thing, Greylog or whatever, you know, on your own in, in front, yeah, as part of your cloud transition, you say, okay, well, we're going to adopt open telemetry because that is, you know, blessed and, and gives us a lot of access to this whole ecosystems. Uh, these are the questions that we'll, what that a CIO might ask, sure. right? So, so right. even though OTAL might not implement them, I think having some sort of at least position statement, even if it's to say like, hey, for this slice of the of the capability stack, you know, this is a place where vendors compete and pro to provide different loadouts of value and cost to customers, and we don't, or just like some guidelines, because because again, I think I think I maybe just, um, be dizzy, right. Matt, there the tag, you know, our tag observability group can actually help there because I think at the project level, as you know, uh, uh, you know, unless it's an absolutely an implementation driven, uh, uh, you know, spec that fits in into the, you know, the requirement as well as what is being developed. Typically, there's some documentation, but then there's links to, you know, other additional uh, references for good practices or implementation, you know, downstream implementations, right? So that's something perhaps, you know, across projects, like you mentioned, even with the cloud events project or other projects, you know, there's some best practices that could be at least yeah. called out. I mean, uh, real quick, I cannot honestly talk about Elastic in this case because I just don't know at this point, but I know still from Dynatristis. Uh, and um, this was a huge topic also for us, uh, also when talking to customers, to be frank, because uh, of course, if someone now decides to kind of start logging all credit card data that can kind of run through it, you cannot prevent it. Um, then it's hard to defend uh, against it. I mean, usually a, a backend can do that, of course. I mean, to apply filters when the data comes in. And this is, I guess, the logic. We, I think the Dynatrace take was, if I, if I get it right still, okay, they can send whatever. We have to be defensive uh, on, on the backend side to make sure that we don't at least Lock this, show this data right away. So there were of, is filtering in place, and you cannot trust the, what what comes in there. And I think from a vendor perspective, you will never trust fully uh, what what I mean. You never know someone 
creates a you have an open interface you don't know what you cannot trust that the agent the open tele or open telemetry collector uh removes it because someone creates a fork and there you go so yeah it's absolutely because you can you can always add <laughs> more components in yeah but in terms of what we could do in the tag i do agree uh I'll, you know, you know we, we could even, you know, frame these scenarios and personas and articulate them. Yeah, yeah. And then in a tag document, be like, and here are the vendors that can make a PR to add themselves to the list, you know, or we can see that that, that offer solutions and, and just leave it at that if they're CNCF members, you know, like we can have sort of a part of that um, part of that Rolodex, <laughs> she's a really dated term now, um, of, of observability vendors and projects and, and, and sort of I mean, radar uh, with some context. In one sense, you know, you could also leverage like for large projects, their registries, right? Open telemetry maintains a registry of, you know, different third party components as well as components on the project um, of what, you know, provides what fu functionality. But I think it's also going one step forward beyond that to say that, you know, what are the, um, for each of these use cases, you know, where, where do you look for that feature set, right? And, and where do you look for the good the documentation for for what's been implemented or what exists in the standard versus not right just having that information available is also very useful yeah i'm pulling up an issue to link here that is, is actually a you know it's a needs help issue for anyone watching this um i'm putting it in the chat and i'll put it in the document too uh but to kind of track just just what we've been talking about and it's there um issue number 41 um just to just to make something actionable i mean this has been a great conversation i, I want to watch it later and maybe make some notes but um that might be one place that anyone who's interested could could hop on and um contribute as as you like Matt, we're looking at it. Um, oh, okay, okay, cool. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, we can definitely add, you know, uh, any of the existing information that's available from Hotel, for example, which is already already something that you know is uh, is maintained as a registry. Yeah, the, in the last, uh, last say on this one, I think this also uh, dovetails in nicely with um, a discussion at the TOC. I think it was in early December. Um, one of the last uh, open meetings, you know, talking about the, the technology radars uh, and some of the ambiguity from the CNCF end user radars uh, and what could be done to provide a little more context around, you know, the giant eye chart that is the landscape, you know, in the observability space, at least to kind of, you know, do some of this. It, it, it's a, it's all under that same umbrella of, of, of work stream that, that we could, you know, do here in the tag and then go back to the TOC and say, hey, here's what we're doing for the observability space. This could be a model for others to do as well in their respective areas. Yeah, definitely. That's, a, that's a, again, uh, is the TOC actively discussing that, uh, Matt? Well, yeah, that's what I said. Um, I, I, believe it, I believe it was the early December um, I see. Uh, TOC call. I, I can put a link in the doc after, or it was either that or, or, or late November, but I believe it was when they were discussing um, the end user radars and some of the ambiguity around around that. Um, yeah, I'm curious as to how they actually build that. I don't want to say ambiguity. I want to say um, 
opportunities to to to, yeah. to contribute and do better not to be again not to be disparaging but I, I can provide a link in the doc later sure sure that, that'd be awesome to the discussion so matt did you want to go through the other two items that yeah i can be i can be brief bright and gone uh so over in the last month month and a half um some of us have been meeting around the observe k8's working group um uh there's a couple of links in there um it's a draft PR for the charter, which is basically the Google Doc we've been iterating on for the last six or eight weeks. Um, it was actually started three months ago, I think, uh, you know, just to have it be there low and slow and anyone who wanted to could jump in. Uh, and it's a it just takes what was in the Google Doc and puts it into Markdown. So now we can start with, you know, having it in a more well-formed place. Um, I've got an action, you know, we'll leave it in this PR state for a couple of days, but, you know, we've already kind of it's it's draft form, but it's enough that we can start uh, and just get the working group formalized, which is just be an email. Uh, but you know, feedback on it is welcome. It's it's still pretty rough, um, but at least it captures some of the initial ideas and, and brainstorming around. You know, what would this be? Who, you know, you know, what is it? Who is it for? You know, uh, why? And 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 then the how can can follow. Um, second. Um, Ken uh, Finnegan and Michael Hasselblas have both been kind of regularly showing up and, and helping to drive uh, this over the last month and a half. Uh, cool. And they've both put their hands up to, to help uh, steer and run the working group. So, you know, that's that's a secondary part of the mail to the TOC. Again, the, 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 the meeting today was canceled. You know, uh, I had meant to, you know, bring it up there, but I think uh, we'll do it next time around, but we'll, we'll do it in email in the next few days. Um, and there's a project, uh, a very very recently created uh, project to track you know just administrative stuff uh, as we launch this. Um, so that's that, and then um, the second thing was just uh, so Richie and I uh, come I believe April, April or May whenever the whenever the tag was formed will be two years, and the chair chair uh, uh, durations are two years. So so we'll have chair elections coming up uh, in the spring here. Um, for two of the seats, uh, and as as always, we you know we we absolutely should have something more on the order of three technical leads uh, for the tag. We've just kind of been uh, working along with one, and, and you know I think to to really scale out efforts and you know frame these things out, there's a, a huge opportunity there. If anybody, mm -hmm. yeah, I think I think it would be. Um, I mean, thanks for calling that out, Matt, because I think uh, we could definitely all help in getting more folks you know to be aware of the process and yeah, and being no interested in participating because many people actually participate in the tag uh, you know meetings but it's just that i think folks are just not familiar with i agree you know, um, the process so, some folks such as prava i believe from the new york times um has reached out about you know you know i was able to point to you know, there's actually quite a well-formed governance and process around both technically mm -hmm. it's chairs and how they work. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm sure there are others in the community that might be interested in leadership positions that can really, you know, help drive it as domain experts versus um, practitioners. Uh, yeah, agreed, agreed. Well, I mean, I, again, it like, doesn't make sense. I'll, 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 redact, <laughs> I'll redact that. Um, but yeah. That's no, definitely. I, I think that that's a good call out. Uh, I, I'll ping you and, you know, we'll figure out, you know, how we can further kind of spread the word here, because most of the time I've seen that, you know, things are very last minute in terms of just announcements or just folks finding out about how to participate and yeah, and to that end, actually, I've been trying to get Richie. I haven't been able to connect with him uh, through the, you know, since before the holidays, but hopefully soon. Um, he might remember, but uh, there was a logo election, you know, speaking of getting words out and having a brand around the tag. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe we're like a third round of logo elections. I, I have missed a few meetings. I'm not sure what the current status is, but I asked Amy and and, and I haven't I had an action to go chase this down. So um, I think the only thing I've been aware of is the PR that's been open and, you know, the discussion around on the PR. Yeah, I think you just uh, set a date. I think and just do it, if not. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I think next week onwards, as people, you know, come back from vacation and holidays, uh, let's follow up on that. These, these are easy things, too. Yeah, the, the only other thing I will 
call out that I should have put in the um I'm, fet I'm fetching it now. There's as you can see, there's 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 a uh, there's a CNCF here it is, issue number three in your page, home, which is here in chat. Um when last meeting when we talked to Scott Rigby from App Deploy, um there's this the TOC uh, issue 584 that's linked there. That's kind of the most recent time that Chris uh, at the CTO uh, the, at the at the uh, TOC had worked with a working group, you know, to launch the GitOps working group. And this was sort of the generic checklist um, of things that would be needed to actually launch, you know, observe K8. So, you know, while it's not a tag specific thing, it's more of a working group thing, right? Um, I think that could form, you know, a base template for future working groups for the tag about like, if you're going to launch something, these are the places, these are the things to do. And there's a whole bunch of junk in there, you know, around, you know, transferring domain names and trademarks and just all the stuff, um, the logistics. So if anyone was curious about how the sausage is made, um, you know, that's, that's a, that's the, the model we're working from. No. Oh, okay. Okay. That's pretty useful. Actually. Thanks. For yeah, I'll be converting this to a more observed k 8 specific variant, but I think before I do that, I'll, I'll generalize it to a, 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 an issue template. Mm -hmm. Cool, very cool. Cool. I think um, anybody else had any questions? Otherwise, I think we can give back 10 minutes at least. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so let's do that. Uh, I guess in, in, in closing, well, not closing, because you'll close the meeting, not me. But um, I, I will say that there is a tag for, you know, needs help or good first issue in the tag um, issues board. Uh, and there's all manner of things there that people could just jump into. Uh, many of them are not a whole lot of time. Uh, and, and it's a wide open field of opportunities there. So mm -hmm. that's, that's cool. Um, again, I think, um, Definitely, you know, kind of reaching out to get more folks involved on a regular basis is useful. But that said, okay, um, I think I guess we can close the meeting and uh, thank you everyone for joining in on the first meeting of the year and uh, look forward to doing more together to the year. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.